So we are talking about now about taxes. So a per unit tax imposed on buyers of good X will hurt. Um, who will hurt more? Well, the key here is that we can't really tell the answer because we need to know something about elasticity. And that's why the answer, I said the answer to this question was none of the above. Now, some people raise a, the, the criticism that, well, the answer is really there, so we don't really know which one it is. And that's good criticism. So I will actually say that uh, none of the above is it's kind of equivalent here to we don't have enough information to answer the question. That's really the problem here. We don't have enough information. In order to, in order to really choose either A, B, or C, we need to know something about the elasticity of, of demand or supply because that's really what determines uh, who pays what. Um, and we did, we, in order to explain this, I try to use the analogy of a tax on a relationship. And a tax on a relationship could be something like you have to move away from your girlfriend. Now, if you and your girlfriend have to move away, that, you know, that the separation is in essence a tax. Now, one of the two, there could be, you know, basically three options here. Now, oh, well, actually four options, right? You either decide not to date anymore, right? So that a relationship is broken. You move away and decide to continue, but the girl flies more frequently than the guy. You move away, but the guy flies more frequently than the girl, or you both fly just about the same time. Now, what's going to determine uh, first, what, what's going to determine which of the two, the girl or the guy, are going to fly more? In other words, there's going to be some pain here because of the tax. But how is this pain going to be distributed? And the key here is that whoever is the most in love will be the person flying the most. And here in love, we can use it as an analogy for inelastic, right? That whoever is, is not willing to break up because he's really want to continue um, dating this person, it's gonna be the person who actually gonna fly the most. Whoever has the most inelastic demand for the relationship, it's gonna be the person flying the most. So this so there's another way of saying that whoever is has the most inelastic demand for the relationship will be the person putting with most of the pain or most of the burden of the tax. And that's the same way it happens um, with any good, right? So in here will be, uh, if you wanted to find out what would be, what, what would determine the elasticity for the demand of the relationship, well, clearly how many other available candidates you have here is gonna determine how, you know, how much you're willing to, to put up with the relationship because that determines your demand for the relationship. But you have a lot of, you know, a lot of candidates around here, you might be more tempted to perhaps break up with that girl or, or not pay so much attention to that, to the girl you have in California. And you, you know, you're not going to be willing to fly a lot because you're not valuing the relationship as much as perhaps she does if she doesn't have a lot of available substitutes over there. So the, the point here is um, that, that the more uh, inelastic the demand is, the more of the burden that that person or that side of the market is going to face when you have a tax and the more elastic the demand is or the supply is, so the more, the, you know, more elastic that side of the market, the more that side of the market is gonna be able to pass the pain to the other side. If you have something like cigarettes, for instance, and you have a tax on cigarettes, if the supply is actually very elastic and the demand is very inelastic, it doesn't matter who sends the, the tax to the government. If the tax is, you know, is imposed on, on sellers of cigarettes, well, sellers know that they can increase the price by, by just about the same amount of the tax and buyers will continue to buy the good. So they will simply increase the price and the result of a tax on cigarettes of a, of a good that has a very inelastic demand will be that the buyers of cigarettes will be putting up with most of the burden of the tax. So this is when we talk about the distribution of the tax. So knowing that you can answer any of these type of questions about distribution of taxes that we have here or in your practice problems. For instance, this one, the one we did in class. Say the city of Chicago imposes a 50 cents per unit gallon tax on sellers of gasoline. As a result of this, tax buyers will have to put up with, well, if we think that gasoline is inelastic, which is what the assumption we made in class, if gasoline is inelastic, when clearly the buyers cannot change their consumption habits very quickly with the tax, and they will probably have to pay more for gasoline. It doesn't matter if they have to pay the tax. If they have to pay the tax, they will pay more for gasoline and they will consume the same. So they were definitely paying a lot of chain and all of the burden. If the buyers are the ones selling, the sellers are the ones selling the, sending the tax to the government, they will simply increase the price to just about an amount about just equal to the tax or very close to the tax. And buyers will end up buying just about the same amount of gasoline at a higher price. So no matter what, if the price, in, if the demand for gasoline is inelastic, buyers will end up buying just about the same amount of gasoline and paying a higher price. So more than 50% since since the buyers are going to disproportionately feel the, the pain of this tax more than sellers, 
then they're going to fill it more than 50 percent. Now the second result of the tax is that the tax reduces the size of the market. In other words, if you, going back to the example of the relationship, if you have to, if there's a tax on the relationship, meaning that you have to move away from each other, there clearly the one probability of that tax will be that the relationship doesn't happen anymore, the, the end of the relationship, right? The same way with the markets, right? The, one, the, the effect of taxes in markets is basically to reduce the number of transactions that could otherwise have happened. Clearly, in the case of gasoline, for, ins for instance, you can have a situation in which, uh, over a long period of time, people just switch to bicycles or, or simply start walking more. So over a long period of time, what this tax is going to do is to reduce the size of the gasoline market. So the, the second thing to understand is that the, the tax has, a, a, when we talk about the aggregate impact, not the distributional impact of the tax, which we were talking about before, but the aggregate impact of the tax is to reduce the size of the market. And when is the size of the market going to be reduced more? Well, when the size of the market, when the market is more elastic, meaning when people can actually have substitutes and can replace um, the thing that has a tax with something else. Um, now, something like gasoline is very inelastic. So yes, when you have a tax on gasoline, the size of the market is going to go down. But it's probably going to go down by less than if you, you know, the size of the market as a result of the tax in gasoline is going to go down by less than if you put a tax on these other four things, luxury cars, second home, haircuts, and hotel rooms. See, for all of these things, have a, a, has, they have demands that are more elastic than the demand for gasoline luxury cars, second home, you see those, those, there's a lot of substitutes there for those things. And, you know, people don't really need those things as much as they need gasoline. So when there's an increase in price of those things, people can simply stop consuming them or consume something else. So, so clearly the answer here is kind of a trick question in the classroom is that none of them are really going to re generate more revenue to the city than a tax on gasoline because the result of a tax on any of these things will be, a, it will be a, a, a quite a dramatic reduc reduction in consumption. So, so, you know, the, the city is probably not going to gain much revenue on this as much as they get in gasoline. Now, remember, so this is the same thing as, a, as a pre, the, the relationship between elasticity and total revenue, right? How, if the city is deciding to increase the price on one of these things um, on, to actually increase the revenue, well, they're going to increase the price on the thing that has the lowest elasticity of demand, that, 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 and the most inelastic thing, because that's the, the good that's going to generate the most revenue for them. All right, so that's, uh, that's all we have uh, so far. So um, I think we're going to have some more questions on Tuesday before the exam. But so far, these are the questions that we actually went over class. So make sure you know them. Remember that in, in the exam, there's no surprises. We just simply take questions that we went on class or TA sessions on practice problems and put them in the exam.